Hey everyone, how's it going today? My name is Lamora, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Online. I figured it out, y'all. I somehow, in some way, ended up going into my graphics setting and setting the game, if I can uh, get there, down to a limit of 30 frames per second, which is clearly half of what we were getting. So now I'm getting about like 60 to 70 frames, uh, sometimes dipping down to 50. In the main city area, uh, we'll see where it goes when we have all the characters on screen. But we're back here at the Conjurer's Guild today, and we're going to take on the quest that Madalel has for us, or Maddell. <laughs> I'm going to call her Madalel. Anyways, is your mind made up? Are you ready to join the Conjurer's Guild? Uh, yes, I think I am. Way of the Conjurer, level 1 quest with 100 experience, and then we get 5 raisins. I will explain that in just a bit, but uh, essentially... You want to be eating food all the time because you get a 3% XP bonus. It's incredible. So, Metal wishes you to reaffirm your desire to join the Conjurer's Guild. That is well. I shall introduce you to our Guildmaster, Brother Isumi-yan. Sure, I'm the, that's how I assume it's pronounced. Brother Isumi-yan presides over the Conjurer's Guild, even as he serves the nation as a healer. Or a hearer. You will find him in the, me uh, in the meditation area within. Go to him and make known your desire to join the guild. All right. So once again, just in case you guys are uh, new to this, we are going through the main story quest of Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, and some of the subsequent uh, DLCs after that. This is a um, this is the Conjurer's Guild. We're going to be playing the game as a Conjurer for pretty much the whole time. Uh, until we get up to about level 50 and finish the, the main story quest. From there, if we get bored and we decide we want to go with something else, we will be able to. Um, but I just don't see it happening. I like playing the healer. I like playing the white mage. Even though, I will admit, it is a little boring in the first half of, of the game. It does get much better later. You just have to bear with me. So if you're like, oof, this is rather slow. I know it does get better though. So let's talk to Brother Yusumiyan, the Guildmaster. Greetings, adventurer. I am told you wish to become a conjurer of Stillglade Fane. I am Brother Yusumiyan, master of this guild. Before you are formally accepted into our ranks, I would impart to you the principles of conjury. Pray attend me well. It's weird that like you can't play this race. Whatever these little people are who have like horns and stuff. Uh, there's other characters that have the horns as well. Uh, it's weird that you can't play them. Uh, there's a dragon race, but no just regular like horn people race. Anyways, pray attend to me well. Conjury is an arcane art that takes life and the living for its domain. Its primary purpose is the salving of hurts and the granting of protection. Adventurers such as yourself oft stand upon the front lines of battle, owing to... Owing, owing to this, you are like uh, like to find yourself in many situations wherein a capacity for healing would be advantageous. Mind you, there is more to Conjury than that. By harnessing the power of earth, wind, and water, Conjury are, Conjurers are also capable of weaving spells that wreak havoc. In terms of sheer destructive power, Conjury may pale in comparison to Thaumaturgy, but its capacity to defend one against aggression more than compensates for the relative shortcoming. In mastering healing and purification, not only will you be able to mend wounds and pure, uh, <clears throat> purge afflictions, you will also be able to breathe life back into the fallen. More than simply healers, yet not true dealers of destruction, conjurers uh, realize their full potential when they employ the power in support of others. This, my dear adventurer, is what it means to be one of us. Hmm, <clears throat> mayhaps that was too much to grasp upon a single hearing. But worry not, for the meaning of my words will become clear to you in due time. Aye, you will come to understand that conjury is not the sole province of the conjurer. Should you wish to walk our path, I must needs ask that you solemnly vow to embrace nature, to heed the will of the elementals and the twelves wood alike. Can you make this vow? Yes, I will. I knew your answers ere your lips had parted. I knew your answer ere your lips had parted, yet I am no less pleased to hear it. 
By the power vested in me, I hereby name you a member of the Conjurer's Guild. And so to work. Listen well now, for I would assign you your first task as a Conjurer of Stillglade fame. Just beyond the city gates, you will encounter squirrels, ladybugs, and fungwars. Fungwars. I would have you slay three of each. Let you, lest you wonder how I can, lest you wonder how I can so coolly order the taking of life, knowing that things are not as they once were, as a consequence of the calamity, and I may add, through no fault of their own, these creatures have become the bur a burden to the Twelve's Wood, a burden it cannot well bear. As a conjurer, it is your duty to carry out the will of the forest. And, by employing your powers in so, in so doing, you will come to learn something of your art. Go now, Nia, and perform your first task in the name of the elementals. The first task is that of slaying creatures. Alright, I believe that is something that I can do. And once again, I just really do want to reiterate how sorry I am in the first episode that I had apparently frame-locked our game, and by extension dumping us down to about 19 to 15 frames per second uh, in the interim. That was really rough for me to watch and play as well, and I did not mean for it to happen. Now, as far as our game goes, it wants us to go Way of the Conjurer to, if we go and just see, it wants us to go to the Central Shroud. Now, in order to get to Central Shroud, we need to take this connecting path and follow into the next area into the central shroud unfortunately like i mentioned before let's just expand it um each of these areas is a separate location that we will have to go through a loading screen for unfortunate but true uh, so just to get to the central shroud alone we need to go through two different loading screens i will try my best to cut out all loading screens but i'm not perfect so i cannot promise you the world here but let us just activate that quest uh, make sure it stays as good as it can be and then we will exit through this new area okay so here we are in the central shroud i cut out walking through old gridania uh just so or new gridania i should say uh just because there's no point we're just walking so let's check our new little active help window for battle right click on a target to switch to active battle or active mode and uh, ready audio attack approach and face the target to start the battle. Two rotating arrows will appear over the target you are currently attacking. So you'll notice like it's a little spinning circle up there. Various actions such as spells and weapon skills can be performed by clicking the icons located in the hotbar on the bottom of your screen. These actions can also be initiated using the shortcut keys indicated in the upper left hand corner of each as you can see here. Standard stuff. Most actions require magic points MP to execute in order, uh, in addition to having recast times of varying length. Detailed information on the actions can be viewed by mousing over its icons. Disciples uh, of magic and disciples of war who specialize in range attacks such as archers are best suited for fighting their targets from a distance. The range and radius of an action can also be confirmed in the help window. Okay. And then we also have for achievements. Congratulations, I got an achievement for mapping out uh, part of Eorzea. New locations that you discover give you some achievement points. Congratulations, you've just received your first achievement. Achievements are earned by reaching a certain milestone during your adventures in Eorzea. And there, uh, and there are achievements for just about everything, from leveling classes to uncovering locations to defeating enemies and earning gil. There are also rewards granted upon obtaining certain achievements. Some of these include rare weapons and armor, others titles, which can be added to your display name and show, uh, to showcase your greatness. Achievement rewards can be claimed from the from jo, Jonath, Jonathus in Old Cretania. Jonathus, okay. Uh, so yeah, if I was to sh have my name above me, you would see that I'm just Nia Lello instead of like anything crazy. Um, let's see, does that person have? Yeah, so that person has a title, and I don't have one just yet. Anyways, not really important here. We have a quest to exterminate some creatures, so let's get that started. Now, I guess this is going to be a majority of our gameplay while we're out here soloing. It's rather slow, I understand. The cast timer does take a while, and the fact that I really only have one attack skill uh, that I will be working with. 
is it's it's kind of disappointing I, I won't lie i wish that we did have something else that we could use but we don't um a little bit later around 50 we'll start getting more stuff so i just want to read these next two things experience points Experience points. In the event that multiple solo players attack the same target, the player who attacks first will always receive 100% of the XP points, experience points, and items dropped. The player who follows will be rewarded based on their contribution to the battle. If you see a fellow player in need of a hand, do not hesitate to lend yours. And then there's binding items. An item you have equipped is now bound to you and can no longer be traded or put up for sale in the markets. Most items can be sold or traded freely before they are used in battle, crafting, or gathering. This is true regardless of whether or not they have been equipped. However, performing one of these three actions after equipping a new piece of gear will bind them to you, preventing further trade or sale to other players. NPC shops will still purchase bound items. So, what essentially, we'll, we'll show you what that means in just a second, but it took me a while to realize what that meant. When an item spirit binds to a character, eventually you'll be able to extract materia from that item. Is it going to give me an active thing? So sweet, I learned cure. So now I have a cure, a personal cure for myself or anyone I find in distress, which is really helpful for getting through the main story quest without a party that, you know, friends or, you know, your free company or guild to help you. Uh, who may be uh, healers, if you're playing a DPS class, you're pretty much shit out of luck. The global cooldown for potions in this game is ridiculous. It's like five minutes. <laughs> so you have really no way to cure yourself, but White Mage does. So it, it's actually really helpful. But uh, after we kill this last ladybug, I'll show you what happens in the, the character menu. But kind of continuing on, we can extract materia a little bit later. The game never really explains this in the beginning, so... I didn't quite understand what spirit bonding was and what extracting material and all that was, uh, so it, it didn't really make sense. But actually, nothing here is technically spirit bound to me right now. Okay, so actually, we can we can kind of show here. If I can't unfortunately move my mouse off of this, but if you look at the picture where it says weathered earrings and then it shows a picture of an earring, you can see two little gauges next to it. One's green, which is the condition of my earrings. So as battles go on, I take more damage. The conditioning of my earrings will go down and I'll need to repair them. If I don't, their effectiveness nearly becomes zero and you don't want that especially if you're in a dungeon with other characters so like if my staff essentially breaks or becomes ineffective uh, i can't heal or put out nearly as much damage as i could it's almost effectively like nothing it's so bad uh, you never want your your items to go pretty much down to breaking point but next to that green bar you can see a little sliver of a blue bar as we use an item more that blue bar will fill up until it's full once it is, we can extract materia from these items, which give you small bonuses like crit plus whatever, like plus three, plus 20 as you get higher. Uh, and then you can put those materials and meld them onto specific gear that has materia slots. Materia is from Final Fantasy VII, if you guys aren't aware. Um, and so that's really cool. If you, if you want to get to the point of getting your, your stats up, you have the option to equip materia. And you can custom tailor that to whatever class you're playing, whatever stats may help you in the long run. So for like a white mage, we want something like critical hits and I think like PAD. PAD will give us faster MP recovery rates and then um, direct hit will increase the or critical will increase the amount of healing that we can do with a critical chance. So we can get out big bursts of healing if we up our critical chance as well with that. So there's a bunch of different play styles. I don't think there's one that's overwhelmingly right or wrong, um, but it's an option for people who are kind of the most dedicated, who are going through the highest level of the content of the game. So just something to keep in mind. And it's not something that I've really looked into. I don't think I've put a single piece of materia on my characters. Uh, it's just not something I've... I really have the interest in doing. Uh, I've been doing pretty well. As I get further in the game, I might want to do stuff like that. But as of right now, it's just not a priority for me at all. Do you look at that like long neck mount? Looks like a is it like a Brontosaurus or Brachiosaurus or something like that. I don't remember. 
not good with dinosaur names. Okay, so I just use the Ethernet here to quickly travel. Um, again, I'm not going to show you if I'm just like running back and forth through different areas. It just makes no sense to pause and unpause and worry about editing all this extra stuff, um, which is the main reason why I, I don't do a lot of videos anymore. But it's just something that I think it will make a, a easier transition as we're we're uh, enjoying the game instead of like having to sit through load screens. But here we are. Uh, welcome back, Nia. The elementals have told me of your success. By, pace, uh, by placing yourself in the midst of nature and seeing it with a conjurer's eyes, you have taken your first steps along the path to enlightenment. Healing, protection, and destruction. Through our Although our spells vary in function, they all derive their power from the same source. The, force, the force is embodied in all creation. By gaining a true understanding of these, a conjurer may call upon them to manipulate his environment, thereby realizing the state of being that he desires. Ah, uh, yes, yours is a familiar look, the very picture of confusion. Be not disheartened, for compensation shall come in due time, or comprehension shall come in due time. For now, you must learn to reach out to the forces embodied in each of us. Pray receive of me this hunting log. Within, you'll find the names of such creatures as would pose a suitable challenge to a conjurer. There is no single path to mastering conjury, yet should you find yourself needing direction, know that this log is there to guide you. Breathe deep and open your eyes to that which cannot be seen. Feel the myriad of feel the myriad life around you. I feel like it should be the myriad of life around you, but whatever. The myriad life around you and draw upon these boundless reservoirs this boundless reservoir of energy. Take up your cane and use it to lend that energy form. Go forth, my young conjurer, and be at one with the world. Return to me when you have learned to draw upon the forces around you with the same with the self same ease you draw upon those within. The next conjurer quest will be available from Isumi Yan upon reaching level 5. So as of right now, uh, up until about level 50, we will get a new class quest, a conjurer quest, every 5 levels. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. So we got our 5 raisins, and we've also got a bunch of experience. So we also obtained our hunting log, which I will explain in just a second. But let's look at using items. Some items can be used granting various effects as such, uh, such as instant HP, reservation, or restoration, attribute boost, and more. Using an item is as simple as selecting use from the item subcommands. All items with recast timers cannot be used again until the timer has expired. Uh, items you use often can be set uh, to your hotbars for easy access. Okay, and then we have our hunting log. The hunting log is a record of your completion of tasks involving slaying of certain creatures. By completing these tasks, you will be uh, you will earn rewards to unlock new challenges. The log can be accessed via logs found in the main command menu or by pressing H on your keyboard. Once the log is open, select a class and difficulty you and difficulty to view the available challenges for that rank. Each challenge is marked with a class name and a number, such as Lancer 01. Below that name and the number, you will find the target as well as how many of the target you must defeat. Hovering over the target's name will display one of the areas in which the target can be located. Target indicated by Targets indicated in your hunting log will have a special icon above their display name. Make it easier to locate the creatures. So it's like this little swirly pattern that you'll see. Uh, I'll explain that in just like a little bit more detail here now that we can actually see the hunting log. So um, here it is, here's the hunting log. Right now, if we go over to the conjurer, you can show all of the, the different things that you'll get and you can see for every thing that you kill, you'll get a bit of XP for it. So if we kill three ladybugs, we'll get 75 XP. If you kill three uh, ground squirrels, we'll get 180. Three of the fungar, 360. And it just keeps on going up from there. Uh, but you can also tell conjurer five. It's telling you the levels that you really should be when you're fighting these now granted you can usually take something out three to four levels above you if you are really um like doing your all 
For DPS classes, you might be able to get away with a bit more, but unfortunately for our white mage class, because we're not so much DPS focused, it will, I would say about three to four levels above us is where our maximum uh, ability is to lie. It gets a little bit better as we go through the game at level 30, I believe we get access to a chocobo companion that can be summoned into the world and will fight alongside us. Yeah, that's right. They're not just for riding. I am really excited to get my chocobo companion. I mean, it really helps make some of the fights in this game a heck of a lot easier. Um, I, at least I found. I mean, because it's an extra party member that you just automatically have with you at all given times. So getting up to level 30 and getting to that point is a huge push for us as of right now. That's, that's all I'm saying. Okay, real quick, um, I just came back to oh i already attuned to that one um so i just came back to this area because i wanted to check out our delivery moogle looks like we have six different pieces of mail uh so i want to collect those before we get too far greetings tall one i am delivery moogle moogle koopa oh i know what you're thinking moogles are supposed to hide in trees and avoid contact with outsiders why ever would they agree to carry out letters why indeed if I had my way, I'd be curled up under the canopy of a nice oak dreaming about some beautiful Mugulette. I did not know that's what they were called. Mugulette. Uh, with rainbow-colored pom-pom. Kupo. But no. The moon had to go and drop from the sky, causing all that terrible commotion. Aetherites were shattered and link pearls rendered useless. For moons, the poor wingless people of Eorzea had no way of communicating with each other beyond screaming at the top of their lungs, which no one really approved of. Kupo. That is, until the little horned ones asked us to assist them by delivering messages. At first, we were wary of showing ourselves, worried that one of you might catch us, uh, catch and skin us, like you do every other forest furry. But once we saw how much we were appreciated, we knew we found our new calling. And I personally promised to try and not read uh, any along the way. Well, I would appreciate if you didn't read my mail, but hey, you're, you're adorable, so it's okay. Look at what uh, we have here. Six new letters have arrived just for you. Okay, so Kupo um, Moogle Delivery Service. This is just your mailbox. Um, delivery Moogles, Moogles of the Letterbox, blah, 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 friends list. It really just is nothing. Looking new, located in upper right, blah, blah, service letter editor. Yeah, I have no interest in that. Let's collect some of our things here. We have the Helm of Light. Increases XP earned by 20% when leveling to level 10 and below. So definitely want one of those. Uh, so I will take that. Real quick, we'll just do this. It's an untradeable item. Uh, this item is yours and yours alone, and it cannot be sold or traded. Okay. Let's get our... No? Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, I can't just uh, get out of that. Anyways, uh, you have attained a unique item. As this item is special, you can never possess more than one at a time. Yeah. Okay, so we'll delete that. We have a baby suffer. It's because I've subscribed to this game and I bought like an extra pack for different things like that. But now we have a minion. You have obtained a whistle with uh, which you can summon your very own minion. To learn the call minion action, you must first use the whistle. Once you have used the item, a new entry will appear in your minion guide found under character in the main menu. You can either initiate the action from this menu or drag the icon, blah, blah, blah. Just send your minion away, simply reselect the summon icon. Minions can be summoned or dismissed at any time. Uh, recast timer. Okay, this really means nothing. So, this is more important. While minions do not generate any enmity, en 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 <laughs> uh, neither will they participate in battle. If you are KO'd, your minion will simply wander off back to where it, it is at rest until you call upon it again. So, yeah, minions do nothing in this game. They're just a vanity item, cosmetic, and I love them for that. Um, here we got a piece of chocobo armor. I don't have a chocobo just yet, but once we do, we can put that on, and I think it's in the shape of Behemoth. We also have a uh, Coriel Bell, which is a mount summon. So, when we have access to mounts, we'll be able to get a specialty mount there. We also have a Fat Chocobo Whistle, which is again another mount uh, summoner. So we'll get access to Fat Chocobo as a mount. And then we have a new minion, which is the Wind Up Moogle. So we have a few minions already. Unfortunately, we don't have access to them or... I don't actually know. We'll have to double check that. But that's all I have for right now. Uh, one thing I do want to do is go into my character, go into the headgear, 
and equip that onto our head. So now up until level 10, we'll gain extra experience boost, which is mwah. I wish I had done that before for our other quest, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, so if we go into our inventory real quick, we can use our baby behemoth. We can use our chocobo behemoth barding armor. We can use our Corel Bell, and we can use Fat Chocobo, and we can use our Moogle Windup. Okay, cool. So let's see here. If we go into our... No, that's just mount guide. So you can actually see some of the mounts that we can get here. Um, we want this here, Mount Roulette. We also want to go into Minion Guide, and we want to have minions summoned over there. Cool. Alright, that should do. There we go. Just kind of have things like that. Alright, so now if we hit this button, we'll summon a little baby behemoth. And you can see he's just adorable. Look at that. So you can see who it's the, the name of the, the minion and then the owner of said minion. They usually kind of wander around and do their own little thing. Uh, just real quick, you can also see that they ha each have their own temperament. His is independent, so he'll kind of wander around and do his own thing. Whereas the wind-up Moogle will be kind of obedient. Um, I don't know if it does anything else in this game, but as of right now, that's what we deal with. So let's just see if we can get the wind-up Moogle. There he is, just flying behind us, looking all cute and whatnot. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go out into the wide world. Uh, actually, what's this quest? So we need to go into the the Corel Cavern. I forget the name of the actual um, place where Mother Mio is. All right, so unfortunately, I just found out that uh, I was not the right level. We need to be level four, if you remember, to access that next main story quest. So we're going to be doing a little bit of hunting in our hunting log here. Uh, you can see this little symbol that I was telling you about before. One thing uh, I should mention about this game as far as the enemies are concerned, see this blue little thing right next to their name? This little blue arrow or a person or whatever? That means that these guys are not hostile towards you and will not attack on sight. They will attack you if you attack them though. Uh, so the second that we attack them, they'll go out and start coming after us. Uh, that's just something to be aware of. There are enemies in this game that have a red little mark next to them, which means that they are hostile towards us, and they will, uh, in fact, attack on sight. Alright, I'm not sure what this dude's doing. I don't know if it's me or his internet that's uh, lagging out like that, but he's skipping all over the place. Alright, just hit level 3 because of fighting those guys. And if I finish off this one, we should get a pretty good chunk of... Oh, we'll only get 75 XP for this one, but any XP is better than none, right? All right, now we'll work on the squirrels. Oh, wait, I did not finish that. Did I, have to, did I have to do three? Maybe it was more. All right, let's fight this one then. As you know, it's not done because the little swirl is still above their head. Okay, and that should have been it. Yep, there we go. So then you always know because of that little symbol, and then it comes down over there. So we got an extra 75 XP. So maybe I... Oh, I had fought two of them, that's why. Okay, I must have thought it was said Ladybug, and I wasn't paying attention. All right, so we only need to do one more Ground Squirrel, and then we'll move on to the Fungi as well. And after that, we should be hopefully level 4. All right, let's see if we can find a hostile guy, one that will attack on sight. That tree sap won't. None of these guys in this area will. That's okay. I know there's a bunch of guys over in that area. Once we get to the higher level uh, spots, that definitely will attack you on sight. Leveling for me isn't going to be too much of a problem. This game has a pretty easy way of leveling. Um... It does require a bit of grinding, but I'm not too concerned about it, to be perfectly frank with you. I will be doing most grinding off screen, though, um, but I'll do some like fun content with you. It's not just going to be story quest all the time. We will uh, we'll have some fun, you know? There's these things called fates in this game. If you look over here, these are boundary areas. You can always tell by this little like angry thing. 
Uh, you can tell the level. It's level 34, so I'm way under level for that. You can always tell the name of it, how long you have until the fates ended, and what the progress is. Back when the game first came out, I heard tales that people used to grind these fates because they pop up all over the place at any random uh, time. And it offers you some cool bonuses. You can get some cool XP bonuses for doing uh, different fates and whatnot. Once we unlock the challenge log, I think at level 10 or something. Uh, there we go. <laughs> we hit level 4. See how much better it is when you get like uh, XP bonuses and whatnot? And the beginning of the game does level you up pretty fast. So we're level 4. We could go back and do that. Uh, but if we try to find some mightlings actually we don't have anything else in central shroud we have the green tier which we could go try to find and get some more xp but since we're level four and i don't exactly know where these guys are i'm not going to go hunting for them um but i heard tales that people used to fate grind because it gave you a lot of different um items that we'll get access to a bit later in the game and it's probably one of the better ways to do such a thing but i guess since one of the updates, they introduced a secondary way to do it, and no one fate grinds anymore. Which is sad, because the fates in this game are fairly fun. There's a wide variety, from killing mega monsters that you need a whole group for. There's some fates that are just escort quests. There's some that are gathering quests, or defeat hordes of enemies, or something of that nature. So there's always new content for you to do um, in this game. It's not like there's... a just it just stops at any given point but people found better ways to spend their time and after i guess a few years of playing the game doing the same fates over and over could get tiring Oof, i was waiting much longer than i thought i would have to uh, but that's okay so let's uh, talk to mother mio here and get our next quest to the bannock 910 experience 127 gil and then 11 wind shards which for crafting i guess i don't know i i don't really worry about that mio wishes to send uh an adventure to the instructor at the bannock nia have you visited the bannock on your wanderings it's a training ground found just outside the city where the soldiers of the order of the twin adder are drilled in sword plate and other martial matters i mention this because an acquaintance of mine a gentleman by the name of galfred is an instructor there and i think you may be of use to him uh, go and introduce yourself and find out if there's anything you can do to help. Mind you, do not stray far from the path. The Twelve's Wood is no place for merry strolls through the underbrush. Alright, so we gotta go back to the Central Shroud now and go find that instructor. Whatever his name was. Again, I, it's just one of those things. I'm not going... Gilf Galfred... Uh, I'm not going to remember these names. A lot of them are kind of hard to pronounce anyway, so don't fault me for that. But you can kind of see how annoying the loading screens can be in this game. Like, just having to run back and forth all the time and having to sit through loading screen that can sometimes take up to 30 plus seconds. It, it's a lot. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, from what I've heard in the later expansions, they start to open up the areas a bit more since uh, they started to learn how to develop for the game uh, a little bit better. And the places, excuse me, uh, they learned how to develop for like the PlayStation 4 a little bit better and uh, for the PC and whatnot. So I don't know how open these open areas are. I assume that they'll still be segmented in some capacity, but hopefully it's a little bit better. Okay. And this pop-in is terrible today. I don't know if it's because I'm um, recording as well, but Jesus. All right, Galfred. Greetings, Nia Lalo. Mion sent word to expect you. My name is Galfred, and I am responsible for training our twin outer recruits. I thank you for volunteering your assistance. The Twelds would... Look at these two dance. That is so adorable. I love how the minions interact with each other. <laughs> I thank you for volunteering your assistance. The Twelves Wood is much uh, much changed since the calamitous arrival of the Seventh Umbral Era five years ago. The power of the elementals wanes, and the harmony of the forest gives way to chaos. A great abundance of life has been lost as the strong run rampant, stifling the weak and new sprung. Though it may not appear so to the eyes of the uh, of an outsider, the Twelves Wood is ailing. It's once uh, rich variety, a fading memory. 
For the citizens of Gridania, the restoration of the forest is a sacred duty, and it is my hope that adventurers such as you will offer an aid, uh, offer to aid them in their struggle. Listen to their request and do all that you can. May the elementals bless your endeavors, Nia Lalo. All right. See, easy as that. Nice, easy completion. And this is the kind of stuff I think that they'll be cutting out where it's just like, there's no point in really doing that quest. Uh, it's kind of useless. And he's going to offer me up another one just to do some random crap. Uh, the beginning of this game is relatively slow. I've mentioned it before. I'll keep on mentioning it. Just stick with it. Once you get into the later games, parts of the game, you'll be like, whoa, <laughs> this is good. All right, let's see what else he has for us. All right, passing muster. Galfred, chief instructor of the Bannock, wishes to inspect your equipment and thereby gauge your readiness for future missions. I see you are eager to lend a hand, Nia. That is well, but I cannot in good conscience send you into the forest until I have established that your equipment is equal to the task. It bears repeating that in the five years since the dawn of the Seventh Umbral Era, many of the Twelve's wood creatures have transformed into vicious, bloodthirsty monsters. Venturing into the forest without the proper gear is, a tantamount to is tantamount to suicide. I suggest you take some time to evaluate your equipment. Once you deem your armor to be of sufficient quality, present yourself to me for inspection. To equip your head, body, hands... Uh, legs and feet with gear of an item level five or above before returning to speak with Galfred. Okay, so gear. You can view your equipped gear, remove it by selecting character. We've already gone over that. To equip an item, first select an army chest and the submarine is equipped. I already went over that. <laughs> okay, um, so the cool thing is if you, you know, just saying you're like, man, I don't, I don't have any uh, gear of that level, which I don't think we do. We have item level one. Oh, actually, we do have some fives. So I think this is what I was mistaken with. If you look at where in the kind of middle area where it says item level five and then all classes level one, when I first started playing the game, I thought it meant that the all classes level one had to be level five. So I was constantly wasting my money by buying and equipping new stuff. It doesn't need to be like that. The only thing that we might want to upgrade right now is our cane because it's an item level one. Uh, but if we go here and see, he's not offering us a new staff or anything just yet. But we may be able to get an item from one of these guys eventually. So I'm not in any rush to spend my money just yet. Ready for inspection, are we? Right then. Eyes forward, back straight. Hmm, yes, I think you passed muster. That sounds weird. <laughs> you would be surprised at how many young promising soldiers get themselves killed by rushing off into the woods without first donning a decent set of armor. Your equipment, however, should provide the required degree of protection. Consider yourself ready for duty, Nia. All right, so we'll complete that. Get a new level, and I can finally go to the next class quest for the Conjurers. That will offer us a new skill as well. Uh, that's how you get um, some of your skills, not the majority. The majority you'll get just by leveling up. But actually, if we we look here, uh, these are the ones that we'll get for just leveling up and just going through, I think. Actually, I may be wrong with that. Some of these you get just by leveling up, but I'm almost positive some of these are locked behind your class quest almost positive so like this one uh repose that we'll just get by leveling up but we may get asuna by doing our class quest though we also may just get medica for doing our level 10 class quest so we'll get one or the other when we level up to 10 and we'll unlock the other by doing our class quest so it is highly detrimental that you do those class quests almost as soon as you get them that way you can um that way you can get all your skills because the more skills that you have the better equipped you'll be but i'm going to rush back and i'm going to start doing that for the next episode this episode we're running at the point where i think it's good we've done enough things i've talked more than i'm comfortable doing in most sessions and so i'm going to cut it off here i want to thank everybody so much for joining me i really do hope you're enjoying this and are looking forward to more we're well on our way into <laughs> the main story quest of realm reborn and we have about 100 
20 more hours until we finish it. <laughs> I hope you guys are ready to buckle in. All right, guys, I'll see you all later. Peace out and much love to you.